afternoon everyone on this lovely drizzly mundane January morning we thought we'd spice things up a little bit and uh, how we're going to do that is adding some anti-lag uh, this is a uh, quite a new product from Turbo Smart it was released early last year um, not very many people have done uh, too much with it yet that we've we've seen so uh, we've decided that we are going to put it on our um, S13, 2J S13 that you may recognise from before. Yeah, so we basically we're going to fit the lovely Turbo Smart uh, ALS40. Uh, it's effectively what allows you to run fresh air anti lag. Uh, the car currently runs a form of anti lag, which uses the. Oh, you explain to me. <laughs> So the, the anti-lag system on the car at the minute is uh, not massively effective. Uh, it does make some lovely noises, but it doesn't do a whole amount of reducing the lag. So um, uh, it basically works with drive-by-wire throttle. Uh, so when you back off the throttle and you would like the turbo to keep spinning, keep producing boost, it cracks open the throttle a little bit, uh, and then you retard the timing on the engine and basically that allows a little bit more fuel and a little bit more air to pass all the way through, not actually combust within the combustion chamber and propel it forwards, but in fact combust in the exhaust system itself. Uh, and now what that's meant to do is it's meant to allow the, the turbine to, to continue spooling. So there's obviously an explosion in the exhaust manifold. It's going to increase positive pressure, which will then make the turbo spin. Uh, the issue with this is, is there's only so much air that you can get through a drive-by-wire throttle all the way through the engine, through the combustion process without actually blowing up in there and for it to blow up in the exhaust manifold. <laughs> Is we're going to fit this nifty little device which has been around for a little while in uh, in most sports such as rallycross time attack and so on uh, it's only just become widely available to the public in a, a reasonably I'd say cheap but affordable uh, scenario or and amount of products which is what turbo smart have provided here so effectively um, this is the ALV 40 um, which is pretty much a wastegate really isn't it? It's adapted wastegate at the end of the day. Uh, this unit costs, uh, it's around £500, um, which that depends on what country you're in. Uh, it's available to buy, anyone could just buy this off of our website. Previously, was there about two grand for one of these? Something like that. Uh, yeah. we've, so we've done quite a few systems in the past for those uh, other motorsports I just mentioned, like uh, World Rallycross, um, and we've used valves from other manufacturers, which were typically very expensive things to buy. Very uh, hard to get hold of yeah, as well. Extremely hard to get hold of, long lead times, and 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 quite expensive. You had to be very dedicated if you wanted that particular uh, component on your car. Uh, the cool thing about this is obviously it's a lot more affordable, it's still not cheap, it's not a £200 mod um, but with its mass availability, part of what we're going to do with the S13 is we're going to fit our most up-to-date 2JZ, 2JZ manifold to it because the one that's on there currently is three years old? Slightly older design isn't it? Yeah, so it's a, it's a six year old design, the actual manifold itself that's on the car has done three seasons um, competing as well as demos and all sorts of bits and pieces like that so it's, uh, it's getting on a bit, it's a pretty old bit of kit as far as uh, motorsport is concerned especially with the amount of abuse that we put through it so we're going to change it for our most updated version which is it's about a year old the design now um, but that is, our, that is our current most latest design with uh, extra wastegate priority um, and all those sorts of bits and pieces um, it actually changes the turbo position very slightly as we found with the massive turbos like the one that we've got on there now I know some of you are going to say massive turbo we've got a bigger one on good for you but I've got this size turbo <laughs> and it is slightly too close to the head for our liking so our new, our new one um, spaces that out slightly it's a little bit better it's a little bit set down 
um, it just allows us to get to an even larger turbo. So the turbo that we've got on there at the minute um, is is will fit in easily, and an even bigger one will still fit in very nicely. So we, we were going to put it onto the manifold in the car because there actually isn't anything wrong with it. But what we want to do is we want to be able to um, you guys to be able to buy this product. So you'll be able to buy this manifold with the uh, fresh air pipework and the flange to mount the ALV40 onto it. And the reason that we're using the new manifold is because if we fit it on the old manifold, it doesn't work on the new one effectively. We don't have the jinx for the old one anymore <laughs> through them in the bin. So, <laughs> so yeah, basically we're designing, uh, we're just an addition to our uh, product that you can buy now. Uh, and you, this will be available to anyone and everyone via our online shop. Um, and this is something that we want to do to make uh, systems like this much more available to the public. And then hopefully we achieve this because otherwise we're going to have to re-record the start of this video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I do hope so. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we can, I suppose. Good afternoon. Can we come back a bit, a little bit later in the day? So we've uh, stripped off our old setup that we had on the car. this new manifold that we had on the shelf. It's very shiny, I think you'll agree. Um, so the next port of call is to work out where exactly we're going to fit this anti-lag valve. Um, but first of all, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit, if I can get that to stay there, a little bit uh, about the flange that we're going to use. Um, now, TurboSmart themselves don't actually make a six-port flange. Um, they, their maximum is a five-port, I believe. Um, not 100% sure why they didn't do a six-port, but they obviously didn't feel it necessary. Um, we, however, working mainly on engines such as this, do feel it's necessary. Uh, so we actually designed our, our own flange. Right. <laughs> uh, so this was uh, completely drawn um, in-house and we outsourced the manufacturing because we don't have the sort of machinery to, to make that unfortunately yet. Um, so uh, in doing that, um, TurboSmart for their design and their flanges, they uh, use a 19 mil bit of pipe to go to each of the runners. Um, we, because this is a six into one, uh, we found that we didn't have the room to, to fit six around there with a, and make it look nice and work well basically. Um, so we've gone for a slightly smaller size with the next size down. Now in the past we've made quite a few of these as I mentioned before and we've always used this next size down pipe which is 16 mm I never remember that one for some reason. So we use 16 mil pipe and we've used that um, on goodness knows how many exhaust manifolds that we've made in the past. Um, with similar systems to this. Um, so we are fairly confident, although we haven't quite tested it yet because it's not in the car, that this is going to work absolutely fine. Um, so next one, where to put this? Um, <clears throat> so, as we know, the, the pressure from the boost side of your engine, so after the uh, compressor housing of the turbo, uh, needs to go in here and then out here towards your manifold. So, and this can't be in a place where it gets too hot, so it can't be right in the middle of the manifold. Um, so I think on where we're going to go today is just here. I'm just gonna sit nicely in front. It'll get a good bit of airflow from the fan, which is just there. Um, and we should be able to make some runners that go from here all the way to the uh, the individual headers on the on the manifold. So on a normal 2J, the alternator is actually here, but it's really oh, yeah. common to put them over here. Uh, mm. Yeah, there's two reasons for that really. One, the main reason for that being heat. So obviously you don't want um, when you start putting a lot more boost into these engines. Obviously they create a lot more heat. So uh, and the alternator can get quite warm where it is and become vastly less efficient so we swap it over to the other side it's not a particularly difficult thing to do just gonna make a couple of little mounts up um, stick the alternator on the other side of the engine 
Um, and that will be necessary for anyone wanting to fit one of these to the finished product. What's reason two? Uh, reason two, I don't know what reason two was. Made the wiring simpler, neater. That was it, it was making the wiring simpler. Well, no, I thought the second reason was because we're going to put our anti-lag valve there. So that can be a third reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, it makes the wiring a lot simpler, so that's why I'm the engineer. Good morning. Um, so yesterday we got all the... Yesterday, it's supposed to be one seamless... One seamless. Uh, yeah, 20 minute whole long process. Yeah, this, um, this takes a little bit longer than 20 minutes, I'm afraid. So uh, Yesterday we got the position for the anti-lag valve uh, in place and I mocked up the pipes. That, that position's where we showed roughly we were going to put it. That's right. That, yeah, yeah. The yeah. From yeah, no, that's that's where, where we had it before. Um, so we made a little bracket to hold it to the manifold and that should help support it um, throughout even when the pipe work is on. Um, so we haven't done this in stainless before, so um, a little bit wary of uh, it cracking. So we put a brace on there to A, help me build the pipes and B, hopefully stop it from ever breaking in the future. Um, so I've yeah, mocked up all the pipes, um, I think this one, probably that one, so that fits in, something like that, and the rest of these, as you'll see, after I've welded them up, fit nicely uh, in this sort of area. Um, so when you say we haven't done stainless before, I suppose we usually use Inconel, isn't it? That's right, sir. so the, the manifolds that we've done have been uh, in Inconel. Um, much thinner gauge in canal as well, so um, we're on a trying to make this as uh, economical as possible. So we're going to attempt to do it in stainless steel, um, and we shall see what happens. Um, an importance of do we not do like a prototype in stainless at one point? Uh, I think we are re yeah very long time mm -hmm. ago we did one prototype in stainless steel for a um, hill climb car, I believe that was and uh, it's still going allegedly so, and that hasn't broken that's done quite a few events now so um, we're quite confident that this is going to work um, but like I say we take every measure to ensure that it is going definitely going to stay there for as long as possible <laughs> even throughout this extremely harsh environment that we're going to put it through um, so part of the process of making sure that it is as strong and uh, as, as good, good flowing as possible not sure that's fantastic English, but I'm sure you get the point. Um, we actually back purge the even the small pipes, even the air feed pipes into the manifold, um, and this just ensures you get a clean weld throughout, inside and out. We do that with the entire manifold um, and exhaust process, but um, it's especially especially important to do it on this um, thinner pipe going into thicker pipe just to make sure that we've got as much flow and as much strength as possible. Well, just for anyone that doesn't know what back purging is, do you want to explain that quickly? So that's basically, um, with this type of welding you use a shield gas, um, which basically covers the weld in argon. Um, so that, that's coming out of the torch, isn't it? So that comes out of the torch So you have, up here. So you have argon comes out here, oh that's not hot. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Around, um, Right, this diffuser yeah uh, and that shields the entire weld area so you get uh, no oxidization of your weld um, and then we also do the same process through the back so we're just feeding argon through the pipework um, just to make sure there's no oxygen so uh, there can be no inclusions and uh, it just makes it a lot smoother doesn't it really like yeah so yeah, the internal world should look very similar to the external world, basically, when you do when you do this sort of process. But you're not going to be able to see it on this pipe, so you have to take our word for it. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. Unless you can get a camera right in there, we might be able to. But, uh, um, yeah, you're just going to have to take our word for it. So, here's the finished article. Um, I've just finished welding all this up. Um, we've bolted all the wastegates and the turbo and everything on it to take some lovely pictures that we'll be posting online. Um, I have tried to, I emphasise tried, to make it so that you can still quite easily get to all the bolt nuts on the bottom here to do it up, but I uh, will let you know how that goes in a minute.
So we've got the car completely together now. Um, this is version one, shall we say, of uh, what we've managed to piece together ourselves with our prior knowledge of these systems. Um, we haven't actually done it on a six cylinder um, or a car like this at all, in fact. Um, we've done a few rallycross cars, as I said, but not uh, not a car with a 2GZ just like this. Um, we've used our own prior knowledge, um, some help from our tuner and from Turbo Smart themselves um, to get this right. So we're hoping that on the dyno tomorrow, it's all going to go as planned. We'll be on version 75 by the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, either that or we'll be on version 75 by the end of the day. So. As the uh, anti-lag valve in there is essentially a wastegate which works um, with a valve and a diaphragm. Uh, you need uh, some form of actuation to open that diaphragm, either pressure or vacuum. Now because there won't be any vacuum in the system whilst the anti-lag system is actually on, uh, we're going to use pressure. So what we have in the engine bay is an accumulation tank. Uh, that has a one-way valve in the bottom of it which takes boost pressure from the boost side, so that's on just after the turbo. Um, as soon as you rev up the engine it will acquire a little bit of boost, um, a little bit of pressure even if there's no load on it. Um, we use that to pump up the tank, um, there's a one-way valve in there so it can't get back out again. And at the end of that is a four-port max solenoid and what that does is that allows us to push the pressure that's in the accumulation tank one side or the other from that diaphragm in the in the uh, ALS valve. So we can we use that to move the valve up and down. I guess it's, like, it's the opposite of a wastegate really isn't it? This tank. Uh, yeah essentially usually you use uh, a vacuum to operate a wastegate um, but this is uh, the other way around so we're actually using pressure to actuate this one. So once uh, we've got the valve opening and closing uh, properly, uh, what this does is it takes pressure from the boost side of the, uh, the turbo, so that's just after the turbo, uh, and it allows the air from there, the um, positive pressure from there, to travel through the valve and then actually into the exhaust manifold itself. Um, then what the tuner's going to do is he's going to retard the timing, add some fuel, um, and just allow that air and fuel to ignite in the exhaust manifold uh, which is going to keep the turbo spinning. Um, once the turbo is spinning even faster it will then continue to create boost and keep the whole system circulating. So we can get ourselves into a, a scenario with this as possible um, to have a, a runaway system. So obviously as it's creating more boost it will put more boost into the exhaust manifold creating more fire, spin the turbo and it will just continuously keep circulating. So we have a few different sensors and bits and pieces there to monitor uh, what's going on. Um, we've got a turbo speed sensor here in, our, in, our, um, in the compressor housing and we've got two EGT sensors in the manifold and we can then monitor how fast the turbo is spinning and how hot it's getting and we can shut it down by closing the valve up um, in, the, in the exhaust manifold there and therefore stopping the air flowing into the exhaust manifold. So in order to read those uh, EGT probes that we've got in the exhaust manifold, we use uh, an ECU master EGT to CAN device. Um, the reason we use this is because our ECU that we're currently using doesn't have any EGT inputs. So we can have up to eight sensors on this um, and what it does is it converts the signal from the EGT sensor to CAN and then that is sent via a CAN bus to your uh, ECU. Most aftermarket ECUs of a certain level can, can use this um, and it just basically puts it into a signal that they can understand. So we've got uh, everything finished, the car's strapped down, it's a very very cold morning as soon as I've finished my cup of tea, I'm going to head off to the dyno and you can see how we get on in part two. <laughs> 